be overwhelming that you'd have Kerberos set up, or at least would set it up real quick. Otherwise, you'd have to go through all kinds of pains on, on various types of BI. But like I said, time is, time is not something I've got much of at the moment, or at least as much as I normally do. Okay, now, once we've got this part down, we've got report data over here. What I want to do is now I want to come over and, and I want to make a new data set, okay? So once we have a data source, which actually receives the data, right, which provides username and password, we then go to data set. And what happens is data set is where we actually bring in all of our, all of, all of our column names, right, which we call fields. And then eventually, um, once we run the report, that becomes the set of data that the report's using, data set. And what we have over here is we kind of have an advantage because we're using the tutorial. They have a self-embedded data set over here that they're using right off the bat. And so I'm just going to copy this data set. And then I want you guys to notice that there's territory over here. Pay attention to that because we're going to be grouping by territory later. And I want you to notice that territory, even though you can't see it, there's a value for, um, there's a value for central for territory. There's a value for south. There's a value for north. Central, north, south are the three values, which means that, which means that if I group by territory, I'm going to have three pages or three different lists that appear. And you guys will see how that list actually shows three pages, one, one, list, one list showing for each group later. Keep that in mind because it's important to understand the grouping mechanism of a list. That's what causes people a lot of trouble, by the way. All right, now I come back and I'm going to bring back up my SSRS report. I'm going to paste that query. As a best practice, whenever we put in a query, we always click on the query designer and run the query just to make sure it works, right? Um, otherwise, we get embarrassed later on, like when we're showing somebody our report or whatever. It's happened to me quite a few times where I wanted to skip things. All right, now I'm going to click OK over here just to save the data set. So nothing new from the, from the previous two you know, lectures that we've seen so far. We're just repeating this part. And so by now, you should begin, begin getting pretty fast at this. The only thing that was really new was that we came over here into the report data panel rather than using the wizard to go ahead and create our actual to, to go ahead and actually create our data set. Okay, now the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to start to change a few things right off the bat. Okay, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to get into a new type called list. So I click insert, and then when I click insert over here, I'm going to double click on list. Awesome, got it. Okay, now one thing to be careful of whenever you get the list over here is you'll notice that when I click on it, it says rectangle over here in the properties. Okay, the reason is because when every single list gets inserted, there's a, there's a rectangle around it which sort of defines the area of the list. But you'll notice something though. If I continue to click in, up, ah, it changes to tablix. So you guys will see the tablix term right after the rectangle. And that's where you truly do alter the list itself. So the area, whenever you're doing that, that's the rectangle um, with borders and things like that. But the actual list region itself is defined by this tablix. So keep that in mind that you have to do that little click like I just did so that that way you know if you're working as the rectangle or the list. That commonly gets people whenever I actually teach this. And I'm strange. And, and what I've learned is that when I teach things, I'll oftentimes see them in consulting assignments as mistakes too, and I do quite frequently. Okay, now coming back over here, I'm going to show you guys a couple other things. So, all right, we've got our list now and whatever else, and we've just added it. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to right click on the, I'm, I'm going to right click on the rectangle. So guys, notice over here it says Tablix Properties. Let me just click over here, right click, there we go. And now I'm looking for Rectangle Properties. So I'm, a, I'm, I'm gonna click on Rectangle Properties right over here. Now, once I hit Rectangle Properties, what I'm gonna do first is tell it this, add a page break after. What, I, what that means is I want a copy of the list for every single, for every single group essentially that I'm gonna put in here. Um, I'm gonna have one, one, one group for every single list for every single page. So what's going to happen is if there's three different if there's three different distinct values in the group territory, which there are, I'm going to have three different pages, each page having like its own independent mini list. And you'll see how this works in just a little bit. Really cool, by the way. So I'm going to say add a page break after and continue. Okay, now there's one other thing that needs to be done real quick, though. Um, even though we drug a list down and you got to see all that sorts of stuff, we do need to do one more thing. We need to link our list to a data set. See, until we link this list to a data set, there's no way to be able to group it or whatever else because of the fact that, you know, we need to tell it what sort of data to group. So what we do is this step becomes very important because we choose our data set. So first, we need this to say the actual data set or the actual list over here so that we can add the data set. So I click on here again and click on these little gray panels right over here, these two. There we go. 
Now, once I click over there, you guys can see over here that it now says Tablix 1. Okay, now we're in business. Now, what we do over here is now that we're in Tablix 1, we need to tell it which data set to use. So you guys see I'm scrolling down, scrolling down for just a moment. And what I'm showing you guys is that when I come up, 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 I want you guys to see that there's an option called data set name right over here. Now, this is very important. So what you're doing logically is you're going to tell it right over here, I want you to use the name of these, these fields that I'm going to be altering. So the fields that you use are going to be over here. Now, this is very important because anything, remember this, anything that you put in the list, any charts, any whatever else, you're going to want them to all use this exact same data set because in SSRS, as you guys will see later, you can have multiple different data sets. And we'll do that in a later, inside of a later tutorial. So for over here, data set, we choose it. And you guys can see its name is called data set one. So I'm going to come back over here now into data set name. Hit the down arrow and there it finds data set one. Okay, now I've got now I've got data set one over there. I could have named it to list data set or whatever. Um, that's what the instructions have, but data set one's the exact same thing. So just keep that in mind as you guys are doing the lab on your own, just for being able to understand what's happening. All right. Now once we're in business over there, we're ready to rock. First thing we're gonna do over here is we need to come in now and we need to tell it what to group by. Details just means group by every single row. That's not really telling us anything. When we group by something, we want to group by something important, right? Usually something that's going to be some significant, um, some significant sort of angle that we're looking at things. Like I'm looking at these cells by territory. In fact, territory is what we're going to use here. So here's how you do it. This is how you change a group. You don't just walk in here and just delete the group. That's not how you do it. First, you right click and you click add group and then go parent group. And then for parent group where it's got group by, tell it the actual field within the data set that you want to group by. So here it is, group by, and then there's territory, and hit OK. Don't hit the group header or group footer because that's not needed over here. What you're doing over here is you've almost got this silent grouping in the background. You'll see that in a second. OK, now, right off the bat, the first thing that it does is it adds a column. The truth is we don't want that column. We do not want that column at all because that column is not what we actually, what we actually need. Um, we want territory, we want all data to be grouped by territory or by the distinct values of territory, north, south, central, um, one, one by north, one by south, one, one by central, but we don't actually want territory to display like this. That's not what we want. So let me just click run for a second, show you what we don't want. There's central, and look at that. Central appears on one page of the list. Now watch this. Here's north, which appears on another page of the list, and here's south, which appears on another page three pages for three distinct values, which is what I was saying before. So remember, when you choose a group, what you do over here is, what you do over here is you choose one list for every, one list page for every single distinct value. And each of these pages, whatever I put inside this list, it's gonna look at it. Like for example, if I put sales over here, it's gonna look at sales for the south, sales for the north, sales for central. Woo, awesome. Getting closer now, getting a lot closer. Now, here we go, okay. There's been a slight mistake inside of the um, inside of the lab instructions, and here's the mistake over here. So it's going to say, come over. It's going to come over here for the SQL Server 2012 version, and it's going to say right over here. Just a quick note, so as you guys are doing the lab over here, it's going to come over to. Let's see where it's at real fast. Do do do. Coming over. Coming over. Coming over. Coming over. And right over here, um, it's going to say right click in the territory column. Right. And then go ahead and click um, and then go ahead and click delete columns. So watch what happens over here. I'm gonna come back and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna right click right over I'm gonna turn around and I'm gonna come inside the territory column. So first left click to go outside to make sure you're outside is what I do. Then left click to go in until you see the gray panels. Then once you see the gray panels, if you just click at the top, that's the actual um, if you just click on the top over here, that's the actual top column right over there. Now I'm gonna click delete.